Attack on Titan is back. Now back in 2016, I did a review of Attack on Titan season one after binge watching the first season. And I kind of figured that since season two is now airing and because the most recent episode just left me absolutely fucking shook, I should rewatch the first season. And I thought it'd be fun this time to watch the show in its English dub. Last time when I binge watched it for the first time, I was doing it on Netflix and so only had access to the Japanese. But when I saw that a whole bunch of my favorite Funimation regulars were in this dub, as they should be, I kind of figured I needed to give the dub a watch. And so for shits and giggles really, I thought, why don't I try and do a series where I talk about each episode after I watch it. Oftentimes when I watch these shows, I have a lot of thoughts. Attack on Titan is one of the few with the way that the first season especially was paced, and especially now that I'm experiencing it in an episodic week by week format, that I'll have thoughts on individual episodes as opposed to just the entire series as a whole. So brace yourselves, guys. Let's bring on the emotional trauma. Wow. Um, okay, just, uh, wow. Can we just, like, start with a gold star shout out to Mama Jaeger. You know what, just Mama Jaeger, my character MVP of this episode, saying it now, it's going to Mama Jaeger. Right, uh, now that that's out of the way, wow, it's really crazy doing a rewatch and a relatively recent rewatch because for me, it's so interesting to see how my reactions have changed. Like, I think I'm definitely at times focusing on different things that are happening or different things on screen and I'm noticing different things than I did the first time. Of course, what's still the same is that underlying sense of dread and just eventual emotional trauma. So I think this is a really strong episode and just an incredibly strong pilot for a show. I mean, there's just really so many good things going on here. And the first one being the look. I know I sort of talked about it in my first review of Attack on Titan, but I fucking love the visual aesthetic of this show and the way it draws its characters. But something I really loved this go round, especially in the kind of big finale of this episode, is what it does with what I'm gonna call the art of slaughter. While it doesn't necessarily start this way, this episode does eventually devolve into what I'm going to call, uh, what we would call post-production, like, like a color filter and color grading. And what it's doing is it's not only just like focusing especially on like browns and oranges and reds, but it's eventually like color starving you of especially blues. You get some definitely in the beginning with like the skies, but after a while you'll notice like the color blue really starts to vanish in this episode and all you get are these kind of russets and browns and obviously a lot of red and kind of pink and orange and you might get some green but not a lot. There's something about this color starvation which makes everything feel far more dusty and chaotic and weighty. That combined with especially the omnipresence of red really just gives you a kind of battlefield atmosphere. What it really reminds me of is actually the aesthetic of Zack Snyder's 300. It, it was really weird when that kind of occurred to me while I was watching the episode. And I'm talking all the way down to the blood. I mean in 300 the blood was of course entirely CGI and so it was able to be splattered across the screen kind of like paint on a canvas. And in here we get blood flying in the air across the screen Fucking rose petals. Just. Oh, it's death and slaughter as art, and I am so here for it. Also, shout out to that epic choir that's playing during that particular scene because I am an absolute sucker for an epic choir, and it really just works so well in that moment. Oh my god. But beyond the look, obviously, it's the characters that are the highlight as it well should be. And I think the main trio especially is set up incredibly well. We get Eren, who's going to be our kind of hot-headed lead to actual badass and kind of queen of savage Mikasa, and Armin, who I don't think I really appreciated Armin during my first watch. What I really noticed about Armin this go round is how, kind of like Eren, he's aware of and really sees and mentions the kind of the critical futility of like this existence behind these walls and how like they are living like animals in a pen. But unlike Aaron, Armin really kind of understands the whole like violence inherent in the system. Help, help, I'm being repressed. I really just love how much he sees 
and analyzes and how he does it in such an inquisitive and yet equally very kind of empathetic way. Also, again, I, I gotta talk about it, Mama Jaeger. Honestly, the first watch, I don't remember if she left that much of an impact on me beyond the shock and horror of her demise at the end of the episode. This time I really appreciated how Jessica Kavanaugh played that role. The scene where Mama Yeager gets angry about Aaron wanting to join the scouts. I really felt that maternal terror and how that came out as anger and leading all the way up to that just horrifying final scene with her last thought being that she doesn't want to be alone. I was crying. I mean, genuinely crying. Just, man, R.I.P. Mama Jaeger. She really struck a chord with me in this episode in a way that the original didn't. Now, there's a lot crammed into this 20-something minute episode, but I think obviously one of the biggest themes especially of this episode is the shattering of like innocence and illusion. Aaron's moment seeing the scout regiment definitely starts this, and you really get a good sense, especially with the one character who says, I'll have been a mess to nothing! But for me, this point is really driven home again by that ending sequence, having Hans as the main vehicle for it. I really love how he's like all prepared to fight that like psychotically smiling Titan. And like, I mean, he's ready to go, pulls out the uh, omnidirectional gear and then he really sees it and you see the terror just grip him and he can't. He takes Aaron and Mikasa really fulfilling Mama Yeager's like last request to please save my children, they are being dumbasses and runs away. And you know what, honestly, I ain't even mad. I ain't even mad that he took what could be considered the coward's route out because frankly, it's equally a smart decision because now he's at least saved these two children and instead of four people being dead, hey, he saved two and three counting himself. And while it's again, really hard to watch, it just makes so much sense. Not only for that character, but again, in driving home this idea that the illusion of their safety, the innocence of these children, all of that, it's gone. It's absolutely gone in that moment and it's never coming back. So there we go. That was Attack on Titan, season one, episode one. Overall, a fantastic episode, really an astonishing pilot for a series. And uh, here's to plenty more trauma to come as I continue this rewatch of Attack on Titan season one. Thanks for watching me ramble today. If you'd like to see more from me, go ahead and click that button with my face on it. It'll take you to my channel where I ramble about a whole lot of different things. Got some thoughts of your own? Go ahead and leave them down in the comments. And make sure that if you want to see more ramblings from me, you click that little subscribe button. That's it for me today, you guys. So until next time, cheers.